a very common dilemma or conundrum between the association regarding the empath and child abuse is recurring. Is the empath created through nurture, environment, or is the empath born that way? And if it goes to the element of nurture, it's often related to child abuse, which then there's a division. The abused child is almost given the choice or its fate is determined it becomes a narcissist or it becomes an empath. But I want to go even deeper into truly analyzing both sides of that theory of that equation. Let's first address the empath and child abuse. Let me begin by clearly communicating I am not a psychologist, I'm not a clinical therapist. I have studied some of the greats. I am an advocate and a subscriber to Dago Mate, to the godfather of modern psychology, Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung. I've done extensive research and my own personal experience and deep self-evaluation. And of course, on social media, we have access to endless resources and whatever is on social media, we know is true. Let's take theory number one. The empath is created through abuse. And as a result of a child being abused, it develops heightened sensitivity and an acute awareness to its environment purely based on self preservation. It needs to understand and observe all the warning, danger signs, red flags in order to keep itself safe. Hyper vigilance. If we go even deeper than that in regards to the origins of the empath, so let's say the empath child is already preordained as an empath and comes to earth as an empath spirit. Now, the job, the function, the responsibility of the empath depending on who you believe and what you subscribe to, I personally believe that the journey, the mission of the empath is to share understanding, bring light and help heal those who are wounded. So on a spiritual plane, the empath spirit comes to earth, born to toxic parents suffering in pain, connected to a lineage of darkness and trauma, and that empath spirit is born into that child. Hence why the empath child tends to experience lots of abuse, because before it's even taken a breath, its mission has been said, you are here to heal. And in order to heal, you need to experience exceptional amounts of pain to develop and stimulate your compassion, your understanding of the human condition. So I personally believe the empath is born. That doesn't mean I negate the other possibilities. This is the choice that I resonates most with me. You make your own decisions as to which of those two theories resonate with you. Let's continue. Now, the fascinating thing with psychology compared to spirituality is that neither can be proven or disproven. When it comes to psychology, a science, a science of the mind, a science of the way humans interact and think. But it is a science based purely on what I'm going to say is a sense, a level of we've made exceptional studies and observations. We come to these conclusions without the ability to actually and factually say this is what is happening in the brain. This is what is happening in the mind. First of all, what is the mind? Is this the mind? Is this the mind? Is the mind the gut? Depending on who you believe in, Sigmund Freud claims that the mind is created from three different components, the brain, the heart, and the gut, three different minds. But we've not been able to map out the absolute, infinite, undefined, um, structure and function of the brain so we fill in the blanks several years ago several hundred years ago a lobotomy was the scientific solution to certain brain challenges well we've since discovered that that's not effective we've now reached an era with modern pharmaceuticals where we determine certain medications are designated to resolve certain problems 
it's a hit and miss. We're not really sure, but our studies show that if we give this certain type of medication to this ailment, we can minimize the impact. Now comes the debate is who diagnoses these children and who determines how they need to be treated. And it always usually leads back to money. So my theories are somewhat anti-conventional and in some ways maybe that's my blessing that I am not following an academic structure but based on personal experience and again extensive research. So the empath and the child who's been abused experiences horrific trauma and that can impact the development of the brain, the quality of the psyche, the self-esteem, the lack of self-esteem. And so often the empath child is traumatized, has a tormented soul, understands the dark because they've been there, but choose to turn it into light. So how does the empath child who's been abused minimize or heal from that trauma? I personally don't think we actually heal. Bear with me if you will. The wounded child does not heal in the sense that if you are born without a leg, your leg will never grow. So you've not healed. And if we translate that, the physical, and compare that and translate that into the psychological, there are parts of the brain with an abused child that literally do not develop or underdevelop, do not develop. And so all we can really do is abused children who become tormented, traumatized adults is learn to manage the torment, learn to manage the dark, empty hole that never gets filled. And through the management, we learn to minimize the pain. And quickly referencing back to Dr. Gabo Mate, who associates and who talks a lot about the impact of trauma and addiction. While I have been incredibly abused and traumatized as a child, sexually abusive father, alcoholic mother, growing up in the English foster care system in and out of homes, I do not suffer from addiction. But according to modern psychology, I check all the, the boxes, I should be an addict. So this is where again, psychology as a science is not black or white. Despite me subscribing to a lot of the things that Dr. Gabor Mate has to say. Another example of where psychology has gotten it wrong, the great Sigmund Freud. for a while had a theory that his psychosis was related to, and all psychosis was a result of sexual abuse from his father, from a parent. And so he concluded, I have psychosis. I must have been abused sexually by my father. Basically accusing his father of sexual abuse. Sigmund Freud, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years later, don't quote me on that, recanted his theory and that's the evolution of psychology before you undermine everything that i have to say that is the risk of psychology it's not black and white now maybe that you've come to an understanding maybe a sense of agreement that yes i cannot heal because we are always told to heal from our trauma and we pursue this unattainable goal, this unattainable piece of jewelry, I'm going to heal and I'm going to keep chasing this piece of magic that's going to save me. And we keep chasing and we keep chasing and we subscribe to medications and we subscribe to treatments all with the promise that take this, do this, and you will heal. Again, I'm not sure that we heal. So if you are a child who's been heavily abused sexually, psychologically, emotionally, physically, and you find yourself often in places of darkness and you 
are taking medications. I'm not recommending you go off your medications. That's your decision. That's for you to research. If it's working for you, stay calm and carry on. But there are alternative ways. And if we change the, the launching pad, the starting place of what are the what's the origin, rather than giving a band-aid, let's find out the root cause of where the water leak is. And if you understand that, well, I can never fix this water leak. Now you start thinking on a completely different wavelength. Instead of trying to fix the water leak, which will never fix it, will simply keep leaking and leaking, but you keep adding more band-aids and more band, but it keeps leaking and it keeps leaking. At some point you have to maybe accept, all right, the boat is leaking. Let me just buy a pump that will help me manage the leaking. It's a slight change of approach to your psychosis, to your trauma, however you want to label that term. But please do not be limited to academic conclusions based on something you have personally experienced and your experience is unique to you. Think outside the box, explore for yourself, discover for yourself, do some research, talk to your, fam to your physician but also have an intellectual input, an emotional understanding of what you're experiencing. And then you can start learning to minimize, manage your trauma. And if you want to consider the minimization of the pain and the trauma as a form of healing, then we can discuss semantics all we want. But ultimately, I have learned in my personal experience that once I stop trying to fix it and heal it, because while that I couldn't heal, all that I did was magnify and bombard myself with infinite levels of guilt and shame. What is wrong with me? Why am I still feeling this? Why am I still experiencing this? I should have gratitude. I should get over it. I should have recovered. Why am I still depressed? Well, maybe you're not depressed. Maybe you're still grieving. All these questions came to mind. So maybe, maybe just start focusing on how do I manage this unfixable situation? How do I minimize my pain, my suffering, and how do I continue or how do I optimize turning that pain into purpose and then bringing value to the rest of society and the rest of your community through your learnings, your understandings? If you'd like to know more about being an empath, about child abuse, I've written this book, Pink is the Color of Empathy. And regarding child abuse, I wrote a top-selling book called Flying Without Net, which is my journey from horrific child abuse to navigating that through my teens to being a highly successful functioning adult with downfalls, with trauma, with pain, but I've learned to manage it and overcome and still achieve and defy the psychological odds, so to speak. Both are available on Amazon. Pink is the color of empathy, flying without a net. And in the book, Flying Without a Net, as a bonus, you will get to learn a little bit about what life is like in Cirque du Soleil. I was once upon a time an acrobat in Cirque du Soleil, one of my great achievements. And a part of my journey of success is I learned to leverage my pain, my suffering, my trauma, and turn it into purpose into good for the betterment of our community, our society. Thank you.